These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. It's five-year mission to explore strange new worlds. Hey guys, how you doing? JP Sarikolia here, and welcome again to another diecast review. And this model, this replica, is one that I was looking forward to. I was so excited when it was announced last year by Tomy, uh, which in this case is the same company as ERTL uh, here in America. They are producers of diecast models. They announced this through a Kickstarter campaign. I pre-ordered it. I was excited about it. I talk about it here on the channel. And finally, after I think 14, 15 months of wait, we finally have it. And it's, it's really an amazing piece of engineering, at least the model. There are good things, there are bad things. And on this video, I wanna talk about it. I wanna break down the things that I like about this model, the things I don't like about this model. Uh, the things that you need to be careful with. The length of this model is 32 inches, which is pretty, pretty large. The package is huge. I don't have the measurements here, but you're looking at around almost 25 pounds. Uh, it's a heavy package. The, the model itself is around 14, 15, and it feels heavier when you're assembling the piece together because it's die cast. This is like one great thing about this model in comparison to other models in the past. When you talk about the Master Replicas, for example, which is a fantastic piece. I, I still think it's an amazing model. Same scale as this one, 1350. We have a lot of models which are plastic that you can put together. But this, just the accomplishment that Tommy did with this, it's amazing. It's heavy, it feels sturdy. I was afraid that it would be light in some way, that it would be very fragile in others, but it's not, I think it's well done. Now, when looking at the packaging, there are a lot of good things I like about it. It comes with its own shipper box. Design is cool. It's nothing like groundbreaking. There's no like super art. It's just simple. It's a Star Trek universe. It's a prestige select model. It's part of this high-end ERTL brand. It comes with a manual, which is cool. It's a black and white manual. It's a simple manual. It has the schematics. So it gives you a visual reference. I like that they're doing this. Uh, because there are a lot of little things that you have to put together. If, not, not to say a lot, but there's a few things, a few screws that you want to make sure that you tie together where the, the touch sensors for the lights are. There's two. Uh, we're going to look at those in a moment. Inside the box, when you open, of course, is styrofoam. I like that it has styrofoam that protects the model. It has two different levels. And on the first level, you have some of the major parts. Another thing that they provided is a 12-month limited warranty, which is cool. Also, they have a certificate of authenticity. When they said this, uh, when they promised that they would add this to the whole kit, I was thinking that it would be much nicer. Now, when all the pieces are out of the box, you have the primary hole, which is the saucer, which is really heavy. I'll tell you, it's a big plate. And you gotta be careful because you have the little plastic that covers the bridge and it, that you have to be careful. Also at the bottom, there is a sensor array, the little sensor that it's a tiny little thing that's sticking out. You gotta be careful. So when you put it on top of something, be careful that you don't crush it with the weight. And this middle section, you need to turn it. You see this door that has a little screw, you unscrew that. And then this section, that's where you insert the batteries. On the bridge, when it, when it lights up, you can see the captain chair, the navigation consoles. And this part close to the bridge, you can see the hidden light switch. You have to touch it and automatically turns on the lights. Um, that's cool. But if you press the button once again, then you want to have the secondary impulse power unit, which is in the case of separation from the saucer. When you see the elevator shaft to the secondary hole, this is technically deck nine to 14. Uh, it's pretty cool. It does have lighter features here. This is what sustains the saucer. The saucer is very heavy. I will point this out. So uh, the way they assemble it together, it, there is one little screw and there is an Allen wrench that has to tighten everything up. I wish there were two screws instead of one to sustain it in a better way, at least two, because that little screw is the one sustaining the whole saucer, which is already heavy as it is which I love the secondary hall. I think it's nice. I like the decals and stuff that they did there. Very accurate. The light up feature, some of their, they blink when they're on. I love that they do that. Now in the front, you can see the main sensor, which is a huge oval, you know, antenna, if you call it that. And this is die cast metal. You only screw this and once you open it, then you have this little compartment where you can insert the batteries. Uh, there are four batteries. It comes. This comes with a total of eight batteries, uh, uh, four AAA batteries, and then you have, of course, the four that go here 
uh, AA batteries. You see the arms, of course, or the legs, as some people call it, which sustain the propulsion units with the motorized nacelles. And the nacelles, uh, the Lido feature, uh, you have the switch right here on the back. You press that little switch and, and this arm and what it does, of course, you have three different modes with the Lido features here. You got the just the blinking lights, which is pretty cool. Then, of course, you see the, uh, the rotating nacelles. There's two speeds. I will tell you that the, the speeds kind of look the same, in my opinion. There might be a difference. There's the, the regular mode and then the fast mode. And then um, when you press this for the fourth time, then it turns off the whole thing. At the back, you have the hangar deck, the bay area for the shuttle crafts. I love that. And you have this tree that were provided. Um, when you open, there's this little door that it covers it. I think this is, I don't know if it's plastic or die cast. I just don't like the fact that the hangar door opens that way. I wish it was retractable. And when you look inside, you have light up features on the whole hangar, which I love the way they did it there. Now, in this case, the shuttle crafts are really good. You got the Galileo, the Columbus, and the Copernicus. Those are the names. There's also die cast. But they really look cool and you have to use some twisters to put them in there because it's hard to get them in there now the paint job is another great aspect of this model they did a fantastic job the shading the weathering all of that is really well done the lines the where they're done the decals they look fantastic they it's really a nice job I would say that there are a couple of things there, like I have some imperfections here and there are some, maybe some markings that were done in the factory and they came like that. So those are the things that are imperfections, but overall they're not as visible. Uh, so I'm not gonna complain about those little imperfections. I might be able to clean them out myself. So in the second hole, you can see these little holes uh, on the front. This holes, in my opinion, um, some people were unhappy that they're visible. Yeah, they're visible at a certain distance, but beyond that, it doesn't break anything. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't make it look worse or bad. I think as it is, it looks fine. I have no issue with it, no problem with it. Um, this is where technically they did all the wiring inside and then didn't cover it. Uh, originally, Tommy said that they will cover those, that they will uh, make sure that it was all flat and clean. But I think in the end, because of budget restrictions, they did a lot of compromises. And unfortunately, some of the things that they promised that they would do, they didn't do it. The original model they showcased, I think it was a resin model, which is lighter. So they have to do certain things when you're doing the diecast model. Again, it's heavier. And because it's heavier, it requires a couple of things that they need to adjust. Now, the biggest disappointment for me is the base. I'm not crazy about the way they engineer the whole base. I wasn't a fan when it was originally showcased in the model. I thought that they would make changes to it originally because they said that they will do some changes. Ultimately, I don't think it's that great. Of course, I know what they were trying to accomplish, trying to create the symbol of Starfleet, which is nice, nice concept, nice idea. The clear plastic at the bottom is not cute at all. It wasn't cute on the original prototype. And, uh, you know, I, I get it. It needs to be sturdy, it needs to be strong. So they use this strong, clear plastic and they just design here and there all over to give strength to it because it's holding a lot of weight uh, with the model. You know, you're looking at 15 pounds, that's a lot of weight for plastic. And, but the base, I'm not crazy. At the bottom, it's hollow and you can sustain this plastic with the little screws that come with and that's all it sustain it. I will recommend you to tight those screws there very, very well. That way it's not shaking because you want to be able to have a stability for the model as heavy as it is. The other thing is the other part, which I don't understand why they did it that way, that it separates into two different parts. And the other part, you have this arm on the side, which in my opinion is the ugliest thing ever. Uh, but I, I totally see the point because it has to sustain that saucer as heavy as it is. It's going to lean eventually. You don't want it to warp eventually because of the weight. And it's going to happen again, as I mentioned, because of that little screw that is Technically sustaining the whole arm, they should have balanced this out a little more, maybe add more weight to the base and that will hold this, maybe add a different or create a different arm or a different clear plastic arm to sustain it. And it's actually resembling what was showcased on the TV series, which I was presented that way. Actually, the model had on the other side, on the left side where the arm is actually located, uh, sustaining the saucer, that was the side where they have all the wiring for the show. 
So that was the side that we never really saw on the TV show. So that was the side, in my opinion, they should have done all the wiring and have all the holes. So at least it will be on the less visible side or do it the way I'm doing it now, which is just having it without. Although for my display, I'm using the arm because I don't want this to droop eventually. So I'm doing it. I'm just doing it for the video. I'm showcasing that it's possible. All right, guys, coming to the end of the video, I'm telling you, I'm really happy with this model. Um, is it perfect? No, it is not. It is the thing that I was expecting. Yes, I would say 98, 99%. As the first real 1350 diecast model in mass production, I think they did a fantastic job with it. Finding this type of models, if you go for the master replica, you know, you go, you wanna pay 6,000 to $10,000, be my guess. But for $600, which costs for this initially, and I seen how it's going in the aftermarket now over $1,000 easily, people asking for 1500. I think eventually it's gonna be more costly and it's coming out well. I have seen other reviews of some of the people sharing theirs and I seen that people are happy with that, the, the purchase easily. They could have sold this for 800, for a thousand dollars and I'm sure that they would have a market. Of course, they did not promote it well initially and, and that was the problem they had with the, the original Kickstarter. They learned that lesson with the Back to the Future. They promoted more. They were on ads on Instagram, on Facebook, everywhere. They created a Facebook group, which was not the greatest. They ultimately, they closed the Facebook group for that. I even had into some arguments there with some people there. They failed initially uh, promoting this. So there's not that many uh, out there. And maybe a few that they, you know, they produce uh, for replacements, for parts, things like that. But other than that, is that's it. This is done. There's nothing more. To me, I'm happy. Unless I want to go also, I can spend almost the same amount of money creating a model, a kit that I can put together and you have to work hours on it and create, put the lighting. That's another route, but most of those kits are plastic. I, I don't think there is one of die cast. It's probably been a few smaller models. But this to me is perfect. The perfect size is not small. It's nice, nice replica of that model at the Smithsonian. Looks really good. You know, I wish, my other hope is that we get the other Model D, the model for the next generation. That is my, I would say the second favorite in my case, the one that I like too, because I love the next generation TV show. The shortcomings are not enough in my opinion. Not enough, it has shortcomings, I'm not going to deny it, it's not perfect, but the shortcomings are not enough. When are we going to get another model like this from another producer? I would say highly unlikely, at least for the next 10 years. Uh, we may get some companies doing resin kits, resin models, and also they will be expensive. It's gonna be options, but for what it is, I think it's fantastic, I love it. I may do some changes to the base to, to have a better display option but I like it. I think it is a fantastic collectible. If you're a fan of Star Trek, if you love the TV show, I did not grow up watching the original TV series when it was on TV. I watched the reruns, um, but I love it. My father was a big fan of Star Trek, so that is where my passion comes from in Star Trek. I love the show and I love everything that Star Trek. And to me, this is a fantastic model that really deserves the praise, even though it's not perfect. And you know, I know some people back out of it and all that, and I think they're now they're kicking their butt, they're regretting it. Some of them, I, I, some people are not, but some people are regretting it. Um, maybe they can get it back or not, because ultimately there was a lot of fear as always with every collectible product, when before it hits the market, you get the first picture, the first complaints, people are not happy, they point in their disappointment, and then you get the other models, and so far I haven't heard so many people complaining about just mi minor things, but other than that, I think it came out really, really good. But what is your opinion, my friends? What do you think about this model? Are you a fan? Are you anticipating yours? You receive yours? You share my opinion? Do you have problems with yours? You're not happy? You disagree with my opinion? Let me know in the comments below. So once again, my friends, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, to comment, and to subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit the notification button so you're reminded of the next video. Please, on the bottom, just share how you feel about everything that we, you saw in this video. And don't forget, you know, be happy, enjoy life. Um, God bless and be well. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.